Hi and welcome to CAD for Construction. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up keyboard shortcuts in G-Star CAD. If you're familiar with my video, you'll notice that I already have a similar video uploaded. In that video, I demonstrate how to set up keyboard shortcuts in AutoCAD. Believe it or not, it's virtually the same in both programs. And in fact, everything I show you in this lesson is 100% applicable to AutoCAD. That won't always be the case, but in this video it, it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up keyboard shortcuts for object snap overrides. And I'm also going to override the F1 key. I don't ever use F1 to access help and I sometimes I accidentally hit it. So I'm going to change F1 to, uh, to regen all and have it send my hatch to back. So I'm going to show you all that and a little bit more in this video. So before getting into the actual tutorial, I'm just going to briefly explain the difference between a an AutoCAD command alias and a keyboard shortcut. So when you run a command alias, and I'll show you a really neat thing in G-Star CAD, they have a really good system for editing the command aliases. This is uh, quite a step up from AutoCAD. I was uh, happy to see this included in the program. And I'll go to the first command alias I usually change when uh, having a fresh copy of either AutoCAD or G-Star CAD. So one thing I, ch I changed was circle originally circle the command alias was c but i want um there we go i use copy way more than i use circle so i change copy to c anyways i'm going to close out of here so any command alias you have to access or activate it from the command line so if i type c for copy it activates the command the command so essentially, a command alias, you have to type the command and hit enter to activate the command. So now a keyboard shortcut, you simply don't hit enter. So for example, a keyboard shortcut can be the F1, F2, F3 keys, or any other function key, or it can be a combination of keys. Uh, one common keyboard shortcuts I see people apply are like Control M or Control 1, Control 2, Control 3. So one thing I like using keyboard shortcuts is object object snap overrides because previously the only way to access an object snap override quickly would either be to right click I'm in the line command right now of course snap overrides and then you just do uh, do whatever another way to access your object snap overrides is to actually type them into the command prompt so you can type nearest or any a for short and it, it will override to the nearest object snap. I'll do that one more time just so you can get a get a feel for what I'm doing here. So this time I'm going to override it to the none object snap override and that temporarily shuts off my object snaps. As you can see my polar stays activated but my object snaps as you can see no matter how close I zoom in it's not going to snap to anything. One last object snap, it, it is an object snap and, and it isn't, is the M2P object snap. And that's actually, it's hard to type on the keyboard because the M the, and the 2 and the P are at opposite ends of the keyboard. So that takes a while to type. So that's a perfect uh, example of when a keyboard shortcut is going to save you a ton of time. So as we get into the lesson, I'm going to show you how to utilize this to... Uh, set up some super useful productivity saving tools using the the CUI. And I'll, I'll use the term CUI a lot in this lesson. It stands for Customizable User Interface. Okay, so we're finally ready to get into the actual lesson. So you'll type uh, CUI at your command prompt. As mentioned, that stands for Customizable User Interface. So we'll have to first create a new command So traditionally, you'd click right here, create new command. And on my computer, I can barely see where the where the command ends up. And as you can see, there's command one, command two. If I create another command, command three. So a lot of people, they'll create the new command and then they can't find it because on, on my computer, um, it's actually hard to see. If I click outside that, I can't, I can't actually see that this is actually highlighted it's slightly off white color but anyways i'll show you a little trick to avoid having to having to deal with that
So I'll just click here to sort alphabetically. And I'm actually going to rename this because I want it to uh, I want it to appear at the top of the list. And that should do it. There we go. So instead of clicking this, I'm just going to right click on this and click duplicate. So now I'm going to give this a name. So keyboard shortcut F1 override. That'll be a, a hint towards what I'm getting at with this, this particular shortcut. Okay, so we have our new command made. I'm going to edit the macro. I'm going to go up here. And I'm not going to teach you a lot about macro in this lesson. If you're interested, I do have videos of, about that on my site. And the macro between these CAD workalikes, AutoCAD, it's completely the same as far as I know. But I'll just uh, teach you the fundamentals just to get through this particular lesson. So this here is the equivalent of hitting the escape key twice, I believe. So what I'm going to type here is hatch. Anything I, any text I type now would simply be applied to the command prompt. So I'll type the command out, make sure it's spelt correctly. I'll put a semicolon. The semicolon is the equivalent of hitting the enter key. So this would, uh, just to review, this would be like hitting the escape key twice. This would be like placing typing hatch to back in your command prompt. The semicolon would be like hitting enter, so we just ran the hatch to back command. And then I'm going to type regen all. And then another semicolon for enter. So it's going to hit escape twice in case we're in a command. It's going to go hatch to back. And that's going to go regen all. It's going to fire off those commands. So we made our command, but our command is just sitting here. It's idle. It's not, uh, it's not doing anything yet. So you're actually going to place it in here. I highly recommend you expand this before the next step or else our command is going to appear at the bottom of this list because you kind of you decide where this goes. It's not it's not uh, controlled alphabetically or sorted in any particular way. It's um, wherever you drag the command, right? Anyways, let's go back up here. Oops. So all I'm going to do is click on this and drag it into here. Now we're not quite done yet. What I have to do is find keys right here. Now here, I'm actually going to test if this is the case with G star cat as well, but in AutoCAD, if you have the caps lock key on and you try to apl apply your uh, shortcut, cause I'm just going to type F1 here. Okay, perfect, it worked. Okay, so just for the AutoCAD users watching this lesson, if you have the caps lock key on and you try to apply any keys, it'll actually assume that you also want to press the shift key. So if I were in AutoCAD and I had my caps lock key on, it would have uh, said shift plus F1. Just uh, be aware of that if you're in AutoCAD, that's not a problem in G Star CAD. So anyways, I've just applied the F1 key to this keyboard shortcut. Now, hopefully when we go back into the drawing, um, uh, one quick tip I'll give you, save your work in the CUI often, go apply. And I think you might have to click okay to actually make sure ch your changes take hold. But the this is the thing, both in AutoCAD and GSTAR CAD, the CUI is a little bit unstable. So you gotta make sure you save your work often by hitting apply and you should be doing this anyways, but actually go out of the CUI and test your stuff quite often because the programs, these programs are quite unstable in the CUI. None of the stuff I show you is really hard, but it is a little bit arduous to perform. It's not stuff you want to be repeating over and over again. Anyway, so let's, uh, let's try out our command. I'm going to change the draw order of that, uh, that hatch to the front. So let's see if our, our shortcut worked. Sure enough, it did. Just to check, it ran hatch the back just like we wanted. And then regen all, it ran that just like we wanted. Okay, so next I'm going to show you how to set up uh, keyboard shortcuts for object snap overrides. 
Okay, I'm going to type CUI at the command prompt again, get back into our uh, customizable user interface. So instead of hitting this button, I'm just going to use our placeholder and duplicate it. So this is going to be a keyboard shortcut for the M2P object snap override. And I'm going to use the F2 key for that. Now an important thing here, when you set up object snap overrides, remember that this represents hitting escape twice. So the object snap overrides, I want to use them during an active command, right? So if I have the escape key hit twice, it's going to exit out of the command. Like imagine you're running the line command and then it hits escape twice. We can't have that, so the simple solution is just type M2 and then a semicolon for enter. And that's all you need for an object snap override. I'm going to hit apply. So I'm going to duplicate my, my keyboard shortcut command I just made and just rename it. That's quicker than uh, duplicating my command placeholder. So this will be F3, and I'm going to use that for the nearest object snap override. And same thing, just uh, NEA. And one more time, I'm going to do it with, uh, I'm going to make the F4 key. Put that as none. Now I'm using the English version. You probably guessed I'm using the English version of GSTAR CAD. To make this uh, multilingual or to make it um, default to the English macro, you add an underscore and a period. So I forget what both these do in particular, but the, the period either defaults to the English version of the, of the command and the underscore forces it to go to the default version of the command if you've somehow applied some sort of override to it. I, I don't think it's applicable to object snap overrides, but be aware that if you're using this in a different language, you'll either have to use a different name for your object snaps, because uh, none means something else in obviously in Japanese or uh, Turkish languages, it might not be the same, but I think adding an underscore or a period does something. I'm going to put some text in the video to clarify that rather than wasting time and guessing. But just be aware that if, if you're having troubles, um, if you're using a different version of the program language-wise, you might want to learn what these two guys do. The period and the underscore that is. But I'm going to leave it out because I'm, I'm never going to be not using the English version of this program. So I'm going to hit apply. And remember, we're not quite done. I got to go to my keyboard shortcuts and uh, I got to drag those in. So I'm going to drag all three of them in. And see, by expanding this, I can keep this neat and tidy, or else I'd have to drag it right from the bottom there. So on the last step, of course, is to go to your keys. Now I just hit F2 to apply it. And remember, if you're in AutoCAD, you can't have the cap slot key on. It'll think you mean F2 plus Shift. But that's uh, so far. That's not a problem in a G Star CAD F3. And just as I finish up here, remember I said that you gotta you gotta save often because the CUI, both in G Star CAD and AutoCAD, is not the most stable thing you'll, you'll use in these programs. So I'm gonna hit apply and OK. Okay, so I'm just going to use the, the line command to test this out. So first I'm going to test my F2. And you can use it either during a command or at the beginning of a command, these object snap overrides. But you can't just use it like when there's no command active. It just says unknown command M2P, right? So you got to be in a command, right? So clearly M2P is working just fine. So let's do another line command. Let's try F3, my nearest snap object snap override. 
and that's working. And let's do F4, none. And as you can see, it just temporarily, temporarily shuts off my object snaps. So as mentioned, the, the alternative would be object snap overrides, right clicking to get to this. And I notice in GSTAR CAD, I don't know if it's the same in AutoCAD, when the command is uh, before I actually do my first click, I, I don't have the right click menu. It just uh, It's just uh, my right mouse button is the same as enter. So I kind of need these keyboard shortcuts in fact. But if, if you don't want to use keyboard shortcuts, you can type all these object snap overrides like near, none, perp for perpendicular. You can type them all at the command line just, to, just in case you didn't know that. So that concludes the actual tutorial. I'll just leave off by saying I'm going to be posting a lot of uh, new CUI customizable user interface tips and tricks. They're going to be obviously centered around GSTAR CAD because that's the new program that I'm going to be using going into the future. Most of the CUI stuff is going to be very applicable to AutoCAD as well, so don't be uh, discouraged. You'll, For AutoCAD users, you're still going to pick up some useful tips and tricks. Unique to GSTAR CAD, there's a few challenges I'll have to overcome before I can get my, uh, my ribbon and my panels looking exactly the way I want them to. I'm also going to have a series of lessons setting up layers from scratch. That will also be applicable to the AutoCAD users. That's kind of going to be a reoccurring theme, I guess. So anyways, thanks very much for watching and I hope this video was helpful.